So uh, I'm Matt, and what I want to talk to you today is about an idea that moved to a project, that moved to a product, that now is moving into something else entirely. So at university, there were four of us who were really interested in the relationship between electronics and the body, and we wondered, would it be possible to print a circuit directly onto the surface of the skin? Right? We didn't know what it was for or why we would want this, but we knew it was definitely interesting. But we also knew that there was not yet a material that would allow this to happen. So we said, let's make a material. And that's what we did. After six months, we created what is a prototype. I mean, you can see it's quite rough, but it works, right? It's lighting up an LED on the back of my hand. But what was really amazing is as soon as we showed these pictures to a few people and they started making the rounds on the internet, it went crazy. People emailed us with all these interesting applications and ideas to how to use it. And it was then that we realized that actually our job wasn't to create the idea. Our job was to create the platform upon which other people could create their ideas. So before we could share it and before we could let them build, we had to, of course, turn this prototype into a product. So what we've got here is a non-toxic electrically conductive paint. It took a lot of work, and that's a whole other talk, but that's what it is. To be more specific, because probably people are wondering what that really means, I like to call it um, a paintable wire. So imagine you apply it to a surface, you let it dry, and then it conducts electricity. So here we've just got it lighting up an LED. But think about it like this. You can learn the basics of electronics just by drawing a circuit. You can paint a light switch directly on your wall, or you can interface with a computer through a piece of paper. So now I've told you a little bit about what it is and how it works. I want to show you what people are doing with it. And I also want to show you that small ideas are turning into projects, and that those projects are turning into whole new platforms for new ideas. So the first idea was that maybe this material belongs in our toolbox next to crayons and tape and paper. Maybe it's a craft material. This wasn't something that we were thinking, but it was certainly something that our first users were thinking when they started doing projects like these, these really neat light-up paper houses that make the crucial point that we shouldn't view electronics as a separate engineering discipline. Maybe we can view it as a part of craft along with this. Another idea was uh, from a bunch of students who said, what if we sandwich your material between some pieces of silicon? So here, if we stretch it, we get a change in its electrical properties. Really clever, but not quite finished or focused until a designer built these beautiful printed bend sensors with it. Yet another idea that we definitely didn't see coming was letting the material remain as a liquid. We worked very hard to design something that would dry, and then a bunch of students said, forget that. We want to make sure it never dries. And so what they did was they put it in baby oil, and then they had these little black electrically conductive blobs floating around. Again, it was a really cool idea, but you know, who knows what this is for? Until a London-based designer took this idea and made this incredibly beautiful series of lamps. So the electricity for the bulb flows from the wall through the paint up into the bulb. You rotate the lamp around, and the light fades on and off. And then finally, there's this idea that's a little bit more technical. It's about using it as a capacitive sensor. So you can see that there's a hand hovering over the pad of the paint, and behind there's a computer. Essentially, what you're doing is the computer is measuring how far away your hand is, which means that you can interact with the paint without touching it, and you can interact with the computer without touching it. Cool idea, but what does it mean? Well, we figured this out when people started making interactive posters. So imagine a gig poster that doesn't tell you about the music, that actually plays the music for you. So, thank you. We, we love these ideas, and, and we love that people are taking ideas and they're making projects out of them, but what we really love is that if we step back a bit, we can see that these projects are creating clusters that really form platforms upon which real innovation can occur. So what I'm gonna show you is this first thing about paper. So a lot of people were using it on paper, but some of the projects weren't about crafts. Some of them were about postcards that store sound, or party invitations that are actually musical instruments, or keyboards that are made on textiles or printed RFID tags. And we realized that actually these things all related to each other, and they form a field that we and others are calling paper electronics. So what was happening is designers were buying our material, they were applying it to paper, and they were presenting devices that didn't look like electrical devices, and yet they allowed you to interact with the computer. And we think there's really significant potential in creating a future that isn't defined by screens, but it's defined by simple, elegant interfaces like this. So it wasn't just designers who were borrowing our material. It was educators, too. We made it non-toxic because we wanted it to work on the skin, 
But teachers thought, hey, maybe that makes it appropriate for kids. And then they discovered that actually it makes a really profound way to teach electronics. So they ran projects like this, which is uh, an airplane with a landing light, or uh, this guy making a Christmas tree, or Gigi's amazing color wheels, or my personal favorite, kindergartners who paint their own desk lamps and then later they light up. Really incredible stuff. But what was most incredible about it is that teachers told us, you know what? It's not the projects, it's the way that we're teaching electronics that engages every kid in the classroom from the budding engineer to the aspiring artist because it treats electronics not like a black box, but like a medium in which everyone can create and build what they want. And because students are looking at it differently and learning differently, they're looking at all of the electrical devices around them differently, which means that they're looking at their world and the world that they're growing up into differently. We are totally inspired by this, and we're trying as hard as we can to respond to it and give them what they need to build even more. So some people would say that what we're doing is maybe open R&D or co-creation or open innovation, but actually, we think it's a lot more than that. Business theorist Jeffrey Moore says that in order for companies to cross the chasm between lead users and mass consumption, they have to build, build strong bridges, and that these bridges need to be made of fully formed product propositions. But actually, we disagree. We have a different view. We think that we're crossing this chasm with thousands of tiny bridges that are all being made with these ideas and these products, or these projects. And that these bridges are special because they only have to be one person wide and they only have to make sense to you. And that way, we're not really sure what the final application could be. It might be education, it might be paper electronics, but what I really wanna ask is, what do you think that the application should be? What do you think the next big platform is? And I invite you to try to discover it. So I'll give you the tools and we want you to build something. I'll tell you how it works and what it is, and then I'll leave it up to you to figure out what it's for. But I think it's best if I leave you with a, a bit of Hegel, because he can certainly say it much better than I can, which is that to discover the purpose of things is the work of history. Thank you very much.